So, this old curmudgeon, this old chunk of coal, just watched Disney's Pixar's Soul. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul So if you've watched this channel, you know that I can be a little critical of Disney. Not so much their creative end. I think there's a lot of talented artists that work for Disney. For instance, Jon Favreau right now is doing a really good job with The Mandalorian from what I've been told. I haven't seen season two yet. However, I get, to, I get a little iffy on Disney when it comes to how they run things. They're more businessy side. I made a video about that, I'll tag it. However, I know how to put that aside and review a movie fairly. Because I know that the artists involved in this have nothing to do with the way Disney is run. And those concerns of the video got further amplified when uh, Bob Iger... <laughs> this is going to sound cartoonish, but Bob Iger wants to be the ambassador of the US and China. E. Bank, Bombay, so or piaster, dollar, ruble, or yen. If they stop moving, it's disaster till they're moving again. But alas, I'm reviewing a movie, not uh, judging the morals of a giant monopoly corporation. Pixar. Pixar has been letting me down lately, not gonna lie. They've seemed to have drifted away from making original films and focused a lot on making sequels for a while. And I haven't been too impressed with any of those sequels, so I didn't bother watching Incredibles 2, I didn't like Finding Dory, I didn't like Monsters University, I didn't like Toy Story 4, even though most people did enjoy that movie, I thought it was a, definitely a step down over the previous three. The original movies as well have been fewer, and what they have released weren't that interesting to me. Coco, to me, was just a ripoff of the Book of Life, and I thought the Book of Life did what Coco did, but better. And to me, Inside Out was basically Osmosis Jones, with a spin on it, don't get me wrong, but still not up to snuff with what Pixar has been releasing in the early part of the century. I think their hits are like Ratatouille is an amazing movie. I love Wally. -E. I think Wally -E is their one of their best. Ratatouille and Wally -E are the two I keep coming to, but the original Finding Nemo as well, Monsters Inc. They have a ton of classics. And I will say that this movie, though not as good as the movies that I've just listed off, is probably the best movie Pixar has released or that I've seen from Pixar since probably Toy Story 3. Keeping in mind that uh, I was I was a little on the fence with what they've been releasing lately. So what is this movie about? Jamie Foxx plays Joe, a jazz pianist. Pianist. A jazz pianist. I always thought that word was funny. But he plays a jazz pianist, and he's about to get his big break. However, he fucking falls in a manhole and dies in the first 15 minutes and becomes a soul. And I'm not gonna spoil anything other than that. This movie has to do a lot with the afterlife, and I had no clue really what this movie was about, and the trailers don't make it too clear. Go in blind is what I'm saying, because this movie is actually a pleasant surprise. Even me with my old cold heart, this old ticker made my heart grow three sizes bigger. So what did I like about this movie? Um, the first thing that I've noticed about this movie, well, the second it started... Actually, no, the first thing I noticed about this movie is that there's no short at the beginning of the movie, and that to me was a little disappointing. But the second thing I noticed upon the movie's start was that the character design here is a lot more different. But one of the complaints I have with Disney animation movies, uh, Pixar less so, but equally as much as Disney, Disney animation, is that the character design tends to be a little plain. All the women have like pointy noses, big glowy eyes, uh, this shaped head. They all kind of look the same, and if I were to show you a character from Tangled, it would look relatively the same as a character from Frozen. 
This movie, the character design has a bit more of an identity. And you look at Joe's character design, and he doesn't have that, like, normal, like, skinny uh, Disney body. He's got, like, a little, he's got a little chub in the grub, you know? He's got, he's, <laughs> he's a little chubbier, but he's still, like, lanky. It's, like, a weird character design, and it's something I want to see Disney do more often, instead of having all their characters kind of look the same. That's a complaint I have with their 2D animation as well back in the 90s, but it kind of carried over to the 3D animation era. All that just to say, the character design here is a lot more unique. I wish that unique character design translated over to the afterlife, but everyone kind of looks the same in the afterlife. They kind of just look like these simplistic ghost characters. But that's the first thing I noticed about this movie, is that this movie has like a different look to it. The animation as well, as always with Pixar, is top notch. This movie, more so than their previous few films, I've noticed their animation, just because it's something a bit more different here as well. They play around with 3D animation and they integrate 2D animation in there as well, kind of blending the two together, which I thought was really interesting. I always wanted Pixar to get a little more creative with their animation, because I watch movies that have come out in the 2010s, stuff like Rango, stuff like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the Lego movie. Those are movies that are really pushing the 3D animation style further. And although their recent movies are on a technical level good, I wanted them to be more crazy, I guess. And this movie doesn't go as far as those three movies that I just named. But by Pixar standards, the animation style in here is a lot more creative, I would say. The message of this movie is something that's got everyone talking. Everyone loves the message of this movie. Basically, the message of this movie is like, look, it's good to have your, your burning passion. And you think that the movie is going to have a message of like, follow your dreams, yada yada yada, shit that we've seen a million times in these Disney movies. But it kind of doesn't go in that direction, and halfway through it kind of throws a monkey wrench. It gets a lot more unique, and that's what I think people are walking away from this movie enjoying. I really liked the message of this movie, the message of, look, you can't let something... You can't let anything in your life uh, be your identity. You have to be a well-rounded person, you have to appreciate life, stuff like that. I don't know if it'll play... <laughs> I don't know if this movie is for kids, really. Like, it's been, like, an ongoing thing that, like, oh, Pixar makes movies for kids, but they're, mo they're more for adults. Uh, I don't see a kid really enjoying this movie, which I don't really mind, but keep that in mind if you're going to show this movie to your kids. They might not like it, because it's not as, like, there's not, it's not as, like, flashy as something like a Finding Nemo where you're like seeing this odd kind of fish show up every once in a while and everything's such a quirky character. This is a lot more subdued. Not as flamboyant as your average Pixar movie. But you know what? I liked it. I like the message. I like the animation. I like Jamie Foxx as, as the main character, Joe, in here. I think Jamie Foxx is a really underrated actor. I think it's because he kind of gives off like a cocky vibe in interviews and that's why people don't really like him. I think people tend to forget how good an actor and a comedian he is, so... Yeah, what are some negatives I have with this movie? I thought the rules of this movie weren't really coherent. I'm sure it makes sense, but it's a little convoluted. And I don't think, if you're making a Pixar animation film, I don't think that's something you really want. And that's what I think would maybe make a kid a little bored. You look at something like going back to Finding Nemo, the whole objective of the movie is Nemo. Uh, Nemo's dad is trying to find Nemo. Straightforward, easy to follow. Here it's like, oh, there's people and they're in like the afterlife and they need to find a badge and in order to get the badge, they need to do something. And it gets a little convoluted and overly messy. I feel like it, this could have benefited by just being more simple. Like a little simplicity would have gone a, a long way just so you can focus more on those characters and the main message of the movie. This is a trope that's in most animation movies. Stuff like Inside Out, stuff like Wreck-It Ralph has it as well. I'm a little tired of like 
the female character being like a happy-go-lucky type. So in Inside Out, you have Joy that's like always happy. And in Wreck-It Ralph, you have Sarah Silverman's character that's like the same thing, happy-go-lucky. This movie has that as well. Tina Fey plays a character called 22 that Jamie Foxx meets in the afterlife. And it's basically a replication of all of those annoying kind of characters. Got a little under my skin, not gonna lie, but I'm an old chunk of coal. What can you do? At, at some point in this movie, I thought it was Amy Poehler doing the voice. And I thought, like, what the fuck? She just did the voice in Inside Out. Why is she doing the voice in fucking Soul? But it was Tina Fey. So that's just to show you how repetitive this character type tends to be. That was a pretty big problem I had with the movie because Tina Fey is like the second lead in this film and I didn't really like her character. I was more invested in Jamie Foxx's character. I wish they paired him with like a more grim reaper type. That would have been awesome. This movie is really good. It's not quite early Pixar and it's better than most Pixar movies that have come out lately. Like, seriously, I kind of lost interest in all Pixar movies. They released one on Disney Plus uh, with Chris Pratt, and I had no interest in seeing that one. They also made, like, Cars 2 and Cars 3, and I didn't even like Cars 1. I thought it was okay, but not something you make a sequel out of. So, yeah, it was good to see Pixar kind of get its footing back. I think they're capable of much better. I think one of the problems Pixar is having is that they made all of their stories, so all the ones we love, Up, Wally, e Ratatouille, uh, Toy Story, The uh, Bug's Life, all of those movies were written during the same time period. And actually not Up, I think Up is not one of those, but Ratatouille, Wally, e uh, Toy Story, Bug's Life, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, all those were written in the same time period. And they started cranking out these movies at a pretty... Uh, pretty fast when you think about it, thinking how much time it takes to make an animated movie. They were making these movies pretty fast, and they kind of just ran out of scripts after a while. Wally was the last script they had in their safe, and ever since then, it's almost kind of like they've been scrambling to make scripts. So, I don't know, that could be the problem. What would I do if I was in charge of Pixar? Honestly, uh, the Pixar shorts, they're always really good. The ones that they play at the beginning of the movies. I, I tend not to like it when it's like a Toy Story short, because I think that's a bit of a cop-out. I want to see something new. But one that I thought was really interesting is they had one. Uh, I'll play a clip from it. I can't remember the name, and I can't remember in what movie it played in. But it really blended 2D animation and 3D animation perfectly. I'd like to see that kind of animation played out in one of these Pixar movies. Another problem Pixar has been having is that I feel like Disney Animation Studio, so the studio that made Wreck-It Ralph and Frozen and all those, uh, I, I feel like they're getting pressured by that animation studio to kind of like collide together and make one big animation department when Pixar was working perfect, perfectly fine on their own. I read that on the internet, I don't know how true it is. That's just my hypotenuse. Alas, I thought Soul was really good. It does have a chance of cracking my top 10 of the year. This year's been pretty good for movies when you think about everything that's happened. Regardless, I think this has been an okay year for movies, so I don't know if this would make the top 10, but it is right now, it can get knocked out, is what I'm saying. Hmm, this weird. What is it? 151,000 souls go into the great beyond every day. And I count every single one of them. The count's off. Huh.